Hi, this is JP from Not A Lots Over Arkham. Welcome to another Arkham Horror LCG campaign playthrough. And we are finishing off the Feast of Hemlock Vale campaign with Wilson Richards. Uh, we are at the last night prelude and uh, instead of filming the final scenario right after this one, uh, because this final prelude is a bit lengthly, lengthier than the previous ones, and the final scenario is much longer. I will film these separate, so I will be filming on this video the prelude and on the next video the final scenario. And uh, just to go through what happened in the intro, we uh, interrupted on the feast, so we added one tablet and one elder thing token to the chaos pack for the remainder of the campaign. Then, um, quickly going through wha what upgrades I have in my deck, uh, I upgraded with the four experience I had, the second overpower to level two, then I removed the two copies of uh, emergency cash from the deck because I don't have e enough experience to upgrade them as I would have wanted to level three. So instead I added two copies of combat training into the deck. Uh, this helped me to pump up my combat and agility and also have one mental um, horror soak on them so I can get to a higher level in some, some tests I need to do. Then um, in the setup we uh, added Dr. Rosa Marquez uh, into our play area. So she is under our control. We also have Judith Park and Theo Peters uh, asset side face up because they have uh, two, uh, uh, three or more um, relationship levels. So they are not on the enemy side face up. Uh, Mother Rachel is at the crossroads asset side face up and because we are playing true solo, we have only one Frenzy the Reveler at the commons, and also uh, because we haven't interacted enough with Gideon Misra, uh, Gideon is on the enemy side. So uh, we can get rid of uh, Gideon quite easily with uh, triple action parlay, set Gideon Misra aside out of play. But that is basically everything. Uh, we uh, ended our last scenario in a defeat, so we got a mental trauma. So we are starting with two uh, damage and two horror on us. And that is it. Um, the last thing to note, we have only this uh, special agenda and act card in play the around the table, which we can read now. So a reveler stands to uh, Ruckus music while others gorge themselves on rank platters of oily food. Visitors and locals alike collapse in fits of laughter while others claw at their eyes. Each of, their way, of them wear a wild, gleeful smile. Objective, confront Mother Rachel if Mother Rachel is defeated. Resolution 1. Okay, so that is basically it. We are ready to begin. So, without further delay, let's get started. We start by drawing our opening hand. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, chainsaw, Overpower, Venture, Tinker, and do two Vicious Blows. Uh, I think I will ditch the Vicious Blows, just because I want to try and find uh, uh, some way to get some clues in the scenario. Okay, so we found a hatchet and perception. That's actually great. We, uh, we can um, play the tinkerer on the chainsaw and still have the hatchet in, in play. Use the hatchet and save some charges on the chainsaw. So that's good. Okay, so that is our uh, starting hand. I will immediately use the Wilson's ability to play the chainsaw down and I will save one resource because it's a tool asset. So 
So now uh, we are set up to fight in the last scenario. And um, let's see. We will do the parlay here. So you ask around about the veil and it is the codex entry number 9. Boarding house. Codex 9 boarding house. The long table of the boarding house is covered in greasy bones and uh, gutted fruit skins. And un an antler skull, not quite a deer's, rests in the center of the table, garnished with bright wildflowers. Either draw three cards or gain three resources. Uh, I'll take the resources because we will need those to uh, parlay with Judith Park later on. And uh, yeah, nothing else to do here. So we'll move to uh, the crossroads. And this is a different crossroads uh, than in the previous preludes. Uh, so it doesn't have the uh, move to the nearest location, fast triggered ability. But that is our turn. We ready up. We draw old keyring and gain a resource. That is that round. Let's go to the next round. We add a doom. Encounter card. There is no encounter deck. So we will continue. I'm just uh, checking. This uh, enemy doesn't have po uh, hunter or neither does Gideon. So we'll just move to the old mill. And we will parlay with Judith Park. So Judith says uh, spend X resources where X is the current day number, parlay 7 of the codex. So we'll spend 3 resources and read entry 7. So, Codex 7, Judith Park. If you backed Judith up, we didn't otherwise. Uh, as you approach, a thorn covered rodent erupts from the underbrush, uh, lunging at you and latching onto your leg. Judith casually emerges from around the side of the mill. You finally kick the creature free, and there is an echoing gunshot as Judith draws her 45 and shoots the creature dead faster than you can blink. This party is getting crazy, she says. Once it's over, I'm out of here. Increased Judith Park's relationship level. Each investigator earns one bonus experience. Okay, so we are at four with Judith and we get one bonus. And I'm not sure if we can even use the experience anymore. I can't remember, but we'll mark it. If we can, that's great. If not, Whatever. Uh, last action. I think uh, we will uh, investigate what's happening here. So we will read the entry 12, the old meal. Okay. Uh, the sails of the mill are completely overgrown with creeping vines and riotous flowers. Something rustles in the underground undergrowth. Choose a resident enemy at this location or a connecting location and test an, any skill too. If you succeed, automatically evade the chosen enemy. So that didn't do anything for us. And that is our turn. Uh, we draw a card, another venture and gain a resource. That is that round. Let's go to the next round. We add a Doom and no encounter card. Uh, I think we'll go talk to Theo, then we'll confront Mother Rachel. We won't be probably interacting with these, or we might, we'll see. Uh, so, two actions, we'll just uh, move from here to that general house and uh, We'll discard three cards from our hand for the parlay. 
We don't need a second adventurer. And uh, let's see, we have one hour power. Um, yeah, get rid of that and uh, get rid of the overpower. So we read um, codex entry 8. Theo Peters. Um, if Theo is having second thoughts and Theo reconciled with Helen, no. If only Theo is having second thoughts, no. Otherwise, uh, you find Theo donning his white gold cloak behind his general store, grinning from ear to ear. I never thought this could get any better, but it, I was wrong, he exclaims. Then pulls out a new copy of The Lost World of Doyle. I saw one of the visitors reading this and they just gave it to me for free. The young man won't stop laughing as he scratches a red patch of skin on his neck. Take control of Theo Peters. Okay, so uh, we control Theo Peters, which is okay. And we can do an uh, additional action to move. So I'm doing that. So I'm going to take some damage here. But we are moving here. Uh, these engage me. And they hit for two damage. And I'll just put one on these guys. Because next round we can just get rid of Gideon and uh, the round after that, we get rid of the Frenzied Reveler. Okay, so that was the enemy phase. Upkeep, we draw cleaning kit and gain a resource. So that is that round. Let's go to the next round. We add a Doom. No encounter card. And so uh, we are three of six on the Doom clock. Uh, first thing first is to, hmm, I'm thinking of, yeah, we could defeat it, but that is a doom. It needs agility, which we don't have, because we don't want to spend anything. So I might just kill off the friends at the Reveler. Then we have one more round. Or I'm just tank it, tank her. So I'm, I'm getting rid of the, uh, Gideon Misra. So Pale set Gideon Misra aside, out of play. That is our turn. We'll take one damage from the Frenzied Reveler. And I have to take it on myself. And we'll go to upkeep, we draw Wolf Mask and gain a resource. That is that round. Let's go to the next round. We add a Doom. And we are still engaged with this enemy. Uh, forgot, I forgot I have a plus one to my agility. And... Uh, So I'll do this. I'll take one attack of opportunity. I'll play the wolf mask. I will parlay. So I'm uh, six versus four because I used that one charge on the cleaning kit. I, I mean the wolf mask. So we are up by two for this parlay, and it is a minus two, so we get rid of the Frenzied Reveler. Is it uh, removed from the game? Yes. Okay, and uh, last action. Uh, actually, we'll use Theo to move for free. And we will parlay with Mother Rachel. I don't have a uh, 
willpower boost at hand. So we're testing uh, three versus two, hoping for the best. Minus two, we fail. Okay, we'll try again next round. That is that round. We'll draw the pair, uh, the peril diary, and we'll gain a resource. So that is that round. Let's go to the next round. We had a doom, so we are at six. Uh, I mean five of six. And the first thing we do is to parlay with Mother Rachel, and we are up by one. Now we really need to succeed because uh, we are running out of time. Minus one. So uh, let's read codex entry one. Okay, so Mother Rachel, uh, we didn't believe. Uh, we didn't lie to Mother Rachel. So Mother Rachel stands up from her place at the table, flies bus around the feast as the matron draws a long ceremonial knife and buries it in the chest of one of her followers. The rest barely take notice as they shovel food into their hungry mouths. There can be no miracle without an equal measure of sacrifice, she says, then looks at you, eyes full of pity. And it is your place to witness the feast. Flip Mother Rachel to her enemy side. So we engage, uh, we don't engage, so this sucks. So uh, Mother Rachel has four health, which is bad. So four fight, two help plus two per investigator, two evade, aloof, retaliate, forced. After you deal one or more damage to Mother Rachel, choose a different resident enemy at her location. That enemy attacks you. So we are unfortunately out of out of actions to defeat Mother Rachel because she is aloof. Mm. Let's see. Well, we are engaging her. If we only had, uh, if we only had a vicious blow in hand, unfortunately, we chucked both of those at the start, which is bad. So, yeah, we're running out of time. Okay, well, um, we'll see if we even make it to the last scenario. So I'm just going to hit with the chainsaw and I engage, so I'm using one from the uh, wolf mask. So we are hitting four, five, six, seven, eight versus two, uh, four. If by any chance we get an extra action or extra round after this, uh, then we can try to defeat her. It is an elder thing with his minus one. If this is a poly attempt, reveal another token. It isn't, so we deal three damage. It's just not enough. So we take one damage and two horror. So one damage on me, two horror. No one, I'll put both on Theo. And that is it, we'll draw one turn too late. And gain a resource. So, vicious blow. Where were you? One turn earlier. So that is that round. Uh, let's go to the next round. So we add a doom. So the agenda advances. We'll see what happens. So we flip this around. The sleep. Uh, glowing spores hang in the air around the effigy, lighting light. Light, lighting up the mirrors and bathing in the festival in a fairy, glow, a fairy glow. You breathe in and feel your mouth and throat buzz with a light tingling sensation. The last thing you hear as you pass out in the, 
is the sound of lifting flutes and tambourines. Each investigator is defeated and suffers one mental or one physical trauma. We'll pick the physical. And uh, because we are defeated, we read um, no resolution was reached. Uh, you awaken to a crowd of smiling faces and silent animal masks staring at you, swaying in the evening air. You are tied to the effigy by barbed wire. Mother Rachel wipes blood from a long sharp knife and stands before you, smiling warmly. I'm so glad you're awake. Check your camp log if the investigators believed. Skip the resolution 2, otherwise skip the resolution 4. Resolution 4. That's enough, Dr. Marcus strides past the grinning river lures and strikes Mother Rachel with her cane. She turns to exhort the crowd. It's not too late. We can still leave. You shout your support. Mother Rachel lurches to her feet, drunkenly holding the ceremonial knife and swinging weakly at the professor. Marcus pushes her as the, uh, at the professor. Um, at the professor. Marcus pushes her away with a well-timed kick. The earth around the effigy cracks with primatic light, uh, then turns uh, bling blindingly bright and the pillar collapses into crystalline shards. A blinding pillar of light shoots out of the nearby well. All you hear as the crossroads collapse is Mother Rachel's empty laughter. Each investigator earns experience equal to the victory X value of each card in the victory display, along with any bonus experience awarded during the, this prelude. Each investigator may now spend the experience recorded under unspent experience in your Campbell log. Proceed to Fate of the Veil, uh, page 61. So uh, we are going to play the next scenario in the next video so just to give a smile spoiler that is it and uh, yeah this didn't go that that well we were one damn damage away from getting a better um, resolution but it is what it is and now we will drop uh, down to five resources and uh, let's see what cards we will keep. We'll keep the Venture, Tinker, Old Keyring, uh, Perception and the Cleaning Kit for our hand for the last scenario and hoping to get those things into play. But yeah, um, that is it. Uh, we still have one I think we will, or do we do a normal mulligan? Because it's not saying that we're keeping those cards. Okay, I'll have to check, but if, if not, uh, we'll keep that hand. But if we don't, then we'll just do a normal mulligan in, for the next scenario. I can't remember uh, off the top of my head. But uh, yeah, that was the prelude for the last night. I uh, hope you guys liked this playthrough. Thanks for watching and until next time.